Hi guys, did you know you can launch your website for free? You can get free domain hosting, plus free plugins and other website essentials. You don't need to pay a single penny to any third party for these services. Yes, all these are free. It doesn't matter what technology your site uses, like Laravel, PHP, Code Igniter, or WordPress. Before starting, please like and subscribe to my channel for more great contents. So first of all, you have to open any browser and search infinityfree.com and then hit enter. This kind of interface will come in front of you. First, you have to register yourself on this website. You can register yourself from here. Nothing is difficult in it. While registering, you just have to provide your valid email and a strong password twice. You then check this box and click on register. I have already created my account, so I will click on login from here. So, after login here, you can launch three types of websites, whether your website is business-related or portfolio, etc. So, without going into detail, I create an account here. So, here you have to scroll down a little bit, and after doing that, you click on the first zero investment, because this site provides us free domain hosting along with unlimited bandwidth. So, after create now, scroll a little bit down. Here I see that I need to choose a domain name, so I will go with crud easiest, and then pick an extension from the options here. You can choose any extension from here. So I choose .free.nf. Now I will check its availability. If you encounter an error here, try using a different domain name. After that, scroll down and select Approved in the consent email. Then click on Create an account. Up to this point, our account has been created, but I need to approve it in the cPanel. This may take a little while. Hmm, now approve it. Something is loading O. Oh, so this is our web cPanel. From here, you can manage your website settings, such as managing files, databases, email accounts, and other hosting features. However, I will close it for now. Let me also finish it. After finishing, you will automatically land on this page. Then here you have to wait for 30 seconds, after which your account or domain will be activated. So our domain is active. After that, we will upload the front end of the website. For that, we have to click on FTP details here. If you scroll down a little bit here, you will see the file Zilla link, then click on this link. After that, you download it from here. I do not download it because I have already downloaded and installed it, as you can see here. So here, let me tell you, I'm going to deploy a PHP project along with the database. It's not a simple portfolio project. For this, I will create a database from here. Now scroll down and click on Create Database. Here it is asking you for database name, so you can give any name here. So I give new database name here, and then I click on Create Database button. Oops, here it encounter an error. Let me check it first. Oh, here I gave a wrong identifier. Now I'll change its name. While giving a database name, take care of its naming conventions, identifier rules, and syntax rules. As you can see, our database is properly prepared. Now I need to update the file for my project that contains the database connections, specifically the connection.php file. I go my project directory, and I will fix the connections in it to match this database. So if you use XAMPP, then your project data will be in the C directory's XAMPP folder and htdocs folder. For Apache, it is inside in www folder. Here's my simple project. I'll open the connection.php file, where I have put all the connections to avoid changes in each file. I have added two comments above to help you set up easily. Let me copy and paste them one by one to set up the connection. Here you can copy it by right-clicking on my SQL username and then copy it. Now, paste it in the connection file instead of the username. Guys, do the exact same thing with the other names too. So be careful when making the connection, as mistakes can lead to time-consuming errors. While copying the MySQL database name here, be careful not to copy the top one, as your database name is not listed there. Instead, copy it from the one below, as I do. Now let me remove the comment slashes. Then, I'll save it as connection.php. Make sure to enable file name extensions from the Windows View tab when saving the file. 
Click Save button and then click Yes. Oh no. Here, I've got an error again. What's this? Oh, I understand. It's because we don't have file write and delete permissions. Now let me allow it. You may also face this issue. So you can solve it exactly the same way as I solved it. Hope you will not face any hurdle while doing it. So after that, I'll save the file as connection.php. Now I need a table file for the database. Creating columns in this video would make it too long. So I've already uploaded a project on this platform. I'll download the file from there and upload it to my project. I open the home page in a new tab, click the home button, and then click on the project I uploaded earlier. If you use exam, run it, type localhost forward slash phpmyadmin in a web browser, and export your database file. Hope you understand what I am going to do here. I just want to download the tables file from phpmyadmin, which is very easy. Here is our tables now. I will download it by clicking on export button, and then here I click on go with the default option SQL. So here our file is downloaded. If you look at the name here, it's very complicated. So first I'm going to change it to an easier one and then save it. For your convenience, I will also place it on the desktop, but I will use it later. For now, I have closed unnecessary tabs. So now I click on FTP details, then scroll down a little bit. Earlier, I told you to download software named FileZilla. Hopefully you have downloaded and installed it. So now let's open the FileZilla software. After opening it, we will add some details from the web page to it. Now I will copy connection names one by one and place them correctly. So first I copy FTP username and then paste it in the username box of FileZilla. Then from here, I enable hide password and then I copy it and paste it in the correct location. Now let me see another one. Oh, it's so easy, let me type it manually, 21. And I will copy FTP host name and then paste it in the host box. Now I will quickly connect it. Make sure these two lights blink at the current time. Otherwise, you made a mistake while making the connection or there is an internet fault. Here, double click on htdocs to enter that folder. Then, right click on this index default file and delete it from here. Click on yes in the confirmation box. Now go to the folder on your PC where your project is located. As you can see, my project is located here. So now, I will copy its path. Copy its path from here. After copying the path, go to FileZilla and paste it here, opposite to the local site. So your directory will open here on the left side. Here, I'll scroll down a little bit, and then I will select my files by pressing the control button and clicking on my files one by one. When you have selected all the files of your project, then drag them to the other right side of the panel. So this uploading or hosting process takes a little while. It depends on your project size. If your project size is high, it will take more time. My CRUD project is small. That's why it was done in just 20 seconds. Now, for the next step, let's focus. I have one important task ahead. I'm about to upload the tables file that I had downloaded from the database via PHP MyAdmin. I will now import it exactly the same way as I exported it earlier. So after entering in PHP My Admin section, click on import here, then click on the file choose, and then go to the same place where your database file is located. So my file is on the desktop, therefore I go to desktop, and I select my file from here, and I open it. After that now, scroll down a bit, and click on the go button here. Here, you can see that my import has successfully been finished. So we are all done until now. Now, we check our website. So you click on the domain here. After that, you go down a little on this page, and from here, you copy your domain name and search for it in the browser. So finally, our site has loaded here. The best part is that my website is working fast and well, just like normal websites. Now, I will enter some data quickly into it, and then I will show you its performance. Will it be good or not? So after filling the form, I click on the Submit button here. So I go down here and click here. Now you can see that our data has been successfully inserted. You can manage this via phpMyAdmin. Let me show you how you can manage it. So here on the left side, you will see My SQL Databases. Click on it, and you will land on a new page. If you scroll down a little, you will see phpMyAdmin. Then click on it. So here, I click on this table. Hmm. Now here you can see all my records. And you can manage them from here like you can update, insert, or delete it. 
Guys, our final step to complete our website is just around the corner. As you can see here, there's a not secure warning on our site. This happens because our site doesn't have an SSL certificate. So click here on SSL button, then scroll down a bit, and then just click on Manage Settings. Here you can see certificate status, like no SSL certificate was found, or no SSL certificate is installed. So add it from here, and then I click on First Option. Here come down a little bit, and then select here any SSL provider. It depends on your choice, but I recommend Zero SSL and Google Trust SSL, so I leave as it, and then I click on Create Order button. Guys, your site will be secured within three to seven days of the order. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. If you have any questions, please comment below. Take care and see you in the next video.